Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I bring you today's word for January 6, 2017. This message is actually the first Friday of the year, right, for the messages. So this is uh, the first week. I trust that this week of messages has been a blessing to you, and I love to close out the week strong and head into the weekend strong. So the title of today's message is Grace Precedes Faith. God's grace must precede our faith. Yesterday we looked at two scriptures and I'm led to go back to those two scriptures this morning. Ephesians 2 and 10 and Mark 8, 34 and 35. So in Ephesians 2 and 10, the apostle Paul said this about us. God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us new people. See, once we're born again, we're made new people. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 said that we are a whole new creation. So we are made new people. Watch this. Why did God make us new people, Paul? Paul says, so that we would spend our lives doing the good things that he had already planned for us to do. You and I, once we're born again, are supposed to spend our lives doing the good things that God had already planned for us to do. In Mark 8, uh, verses 34 and 35, Jesus is talking to a crowd. And this is what he says to the crowd about those who want to follow him and become disciples. He says, any of you who want to be my, my follower or my disciple must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. Now, in, in your Bible, these letters are in red, right? So this is Jesus speaking, not me. But Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to be my follower, if you want to follow me, you must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. Your life is not about you. Your life is all about him and the plans he made for you from the foundations of the world. Jesus went on to say, you must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you for following me. See, there is still a cross associated with following Jesus, and the cross is a place of dying, so we must die to self. We have to pick up that cross daily to follow him. Jesus went on to say, any of you who try to save your life, if you try to follow Jesus, but you're trying to hold on to your old life, he said you're going to lose it. But those who willingly give up their lives for Jesus will find life. They will find true and everlasting life. They will discover they will discover their purpose. They will discover who they're called to be. They will become then the man, the woman that God has called and destined, designed and desires for them to be. So this year, I've been talking about this this week, is a time of the year where people lay out vision, plans, goals for 2017. They're really excited and we should be excited. This is a, an exciting time. And then after they lay those things out, they then launch out in faith to attain the vision and the goals that they've laid out. Now, um, as the scriptures that we just read and many more like them teach us, here's the issue though. God already made plans for us and he made plans for us from the foundations of the world. So as we're making plans, we got to make sure that our plans line up with God's plans. See, true success is more a matter of discovery than one of decision. So if I was a motivational speaker and not a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if I was just a motivational speaker, I would tell you, hey, decide, make a decision, go after it. You do it. You can do it. You know, you have the power. Tap into the power within and all this mess. And I'll be talking to you just about you and your power. But as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, it's not about you at all. I'm telling you, it's not about your power. It's not about your strength. It's not about your ideas. It's not about you. It's about God and God living in you and the plans he already created for you. And it's about not you trying harder, but you dying harder. So it's not an issue of trying, it's an issue of dying. And when you die to self and you accept and receive and discern and discover who God called you to be, and then you pursue that, now it's a completely different story because at that point, it's God living in you, giving you the words and performing the work. I'm a witness. It's an amazing life. The reason why I keep driving this home about, you know, discovering and God's grace and how God's grace has to go before our faith is because it's absolutely critical. When we discover something God has called us to do and then we start doing it, we don't have to ask God to bless a project. The project is already blessed because God told us to do it. If it's God's will, then it's already blessed. Further, we don't have to ask God to give us the grace to do it. If God tells us to do something, now he does call us to do things that we don't feel like we're adequate for, right? Or things that exceed our resume, exceed our education, exceed our bank account a lot of times. But here's the deal. God is not looking for us to do it. He's looking to do it through us. He's looking for our cooperation, not our ability, but our availability. So if we give ourselves over to it and give ourselves over to the project, then God will do it through us. We don't have to ask God to give us the grace. The grace is already there. Why? Because he told us to do it. He will never 
instruct us to do something he hasn't already injected us with. He would never tell us to do something that he hasn't already equipped us for. So if he's telling you to do it, then the grace is already there. The favor is already there. His part is already done by grace. Now he's looking for your part and your part is faith. So this year I'm going to spend a lot of time teaching on faith because you are not going to experience the supernatural victory, the supernatural manifestations, the, the, the best that, that God has for us this year if you don't live by faith, if you don't exercise your faith, if you don't launch out in faith, faith is your part and God requires you to provide the faith because he has already provided the grace. So what does this mean to you today as we close out the week? I have four things to share with you on today. Here we go. Number one, it's okay to come up with ideas. I'm not telling you right? Because I'm telling you to seek God. I'm not telling you not to come up with ideas. I'm not telling you not to write anything down. Uh, on the contrary, I want you to write all this stuff down. At the end of the day, God has graced us to be creative. But what I am telling you is that as you write these things down, as you come up with ideas, as you come up with plans, as a believer, you must then present that before God. You need to get clearance from the Father before you move out. You need to know if the idea that you have in your mind lines up with God's will for your life. You need to know if the idea was birthed in the heart of God or if it's a, just a distraction designed to take you away from God's best. In point number two, I'm going to talk about this distraction. Here's number two. Adam and Eve were drawn away by good and not by evil. Think about that for a minute. Let's talk about that. When Adam and Eve eight of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were pursuing the good part of the tree. So they're looking at this tree. The tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were not pursuing evil. They were pursuing good. Satan told them, well, if you eat of that tree, then, then God doesn't want you to eat because if you eat of that tree, then you're going to be like God. Now they were deceived because they were already like God. Right? So they were deceived into pursuing something. This happens all the time. They were perceived into pursuing something that they already had. And this happens every day. I mean, Satan is still playing the same nasty trick with believers today. But here's my point, though. My point is that Adam and Eve were not pursuing the bad part of the tree. They were pursuing the good part of the tree. They thought it was good, but it wasn't God. Unfortunately, this thing plays out every day all around the world with believers. Countless believers are pursuing good projects. They're pursuing something that's good. Oh, it's good. It has to be good. It might even be good for someone else, another believer. But it may not be God for you. It, it, watch this. If it's good, it's good. I mean, there are things that are good. But that doesn't mean that it's good for you. Right? That doesn't mean Paul said, Look, I could do anything I want. But not everything is beneficial. So I, I have to know what I'm supposed to be doing. I can't do everything. So I only have a certain amount of time on this planet. And I'm not going to waste my time doing things that I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing. It could be a good thing. But if it's not a God thing for you, then it's not good for you. If the project is not part of your purpose, then it belongs to someone else. And if you get involved, watch this. Look at me for a minute. If you get involved in something that even is a good project, but it's not a good project for you, then you're going to be wasting valuable time and energy and effort into something that you were never supposed to be doing in the first place. Number three, living by faith does not mean that you get to pursue anything you want. And then just add some scripture to it and throw a in Jesus name at the end of it. No, that's not what living by faith is. Living by faith means you're led from the inside out. You're living, you're led of, of God's spirit. You're led from the inside out to release your faith for things that God has already provided the grace for. If God's grace is not there, then your faith cannot be there. You can try it, but it's not going to be faith. It's going to be human effort. That's why grace precedes faith. That's why th that's what this message is about. You must understand that it's God's grace that must go before your faith. If the grace is not there, your faith can't be there. And so I'll close out with that. Number four, where there is no grace, there can be no faith. Faith begins where the will of God is known. In order for you to release your faith, you must be able to discern what God has already given you by grace. That's why today's message is grace precedes faith. God's grace must go before your faith. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to speak this over your life from a believing heart. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I am excited about 2017. I believe this year shall be the best year of my life. I'm ready to release my faith to experience your best. I thank you for teaching me the importance of discerning your will before I launch out 
into any project. I am led of your spirit. Like Jesus, I only do what you lead me to do. I only say what you tell me to say. Living this way, I pursue only God projects, not good projects. Once I know something is your will, I also know that your grace has already been allocated. So I release my faith. My faith taps into your grace and I experience supernatural victory. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side of the website and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I know you know someone who needs to watch this video, so share it with them. As you walk into this day, just remember God's grace must precede your faith. And when it does, your faith will tap into God's grace for supernatural victory. God bless you.